Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with ShopSaver CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. In this video, we're going to produce a sign out of sign foam, but we're going to actually create three separate components and combine them to the finished sign. This should really be interesting. Our goal in this project was to create a sign that most of it was 3D engraving, but also has some 3D surfacing parts on the ends. So we decided we could make those separate and put some joinery into it so the parts would align when we glued them on. And it turned out pretty good. So here's how we started. We took the, the actual uh, sign foam, we painted the surface our primary color, and then we put masking on there. Then we turned it over, we machined it so it was uniform thickness, and then we did some joinery on the back side that had to do with attaching the end parts. And then we put some pins so we could, could uh, flip it over. We got that done, then we turned it over, did the 3D engraving part. Right, that got set aside. Then we took our actual shells, and one of our goals was to try to do that 3D surface without an extensive period of time. So we worked out a system. It came out pretty good, and on production-wise, we decided to go ahead and, and combine those parts and make that one program. That's how we actually did it. Now, let's take a look at the software, and let's look at how we actually created the G-code files. Most of this sign is really just 3D engraved, but then we have the shells that get placed on the ends down here that actually deal with the surface. So let's let's start with this. All right, when I set this up, the blank size is 67 and a half by nine and a half by an inch and a half thick, the origins of machine bed. All right, so we start there. All right, now, um, I also set it up as two sides. So let's do the back side first. That's what it looks like. And you notice there's some geometry here. There's a rectangle and a rectangle there, and that's to be a pocket, and there's two holes. So we're gonna do three things here, let me show you. Let's do tool pass. First thing I'm gonna do is fly cut. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I want to, I want uniform thickness because we've got a lap joint in there and if, if the starting thickness isn't correct, the joint won't, won't work right. So what I wanted to do was uh, bring the material exactly down to 1.5. When I mic'd it after it was painted, it turned out about 1.52. So the first thing we do is fly cut that. And you see the tool path and if we go to 3D, Go to simulation. There it is. All right, so that's cut. That's cut flat. So all that's done. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I need a couple pockets, and the pockets are part of a joint. They're part of a lap joint. So if we hit simulation on that, you'll see what these are, how these function later. Then on the back side, I need two more things. I'm gonna turn it over so I need to drill some holes, and that's what those are. That allows me then to turn it over on pins, and with this same drawing, I can actually create a tool path to put the pins in the spool board itself, and that's what this is. That won't show any different. So that's what that is. So that's basically the first operation. So now I've actually created the back side of the middle part of the sign. Now we switch to the other side, and we actually do the 3D engraving, and here are the tool paths. The first one, is actually a clearing tool path. Let's go to 3D, let's go to simulation. And what it's gonna do is actually uh, cut that out with a, that's a half inch bit. Then we came back with another clearing pass with a quarter inch bit. This makes it faster. And then finally, the V carving. So that's pretty much the sign. And then we need to cut it out. So I did an outside rough. That was multiple passes and I left about 15 thousandths of material and we're not cut quite through. And then I did a finish pass on the outside. It's a climb cut. We removed the 15 thousandths and it cut all the way through. So that's pretty much how the side's done. And if we look at the other side, you can see there's the, there's the notch. And when it's, you put all this together, this is actually where a lap joint, where the shell part's gonna fit in. So that's basically what we've got done so far. Now let's take a look at the shell. One of the things I, I wanted to do was to cut this shell surface as quickly as possible. And you know, you can you could certainly treat that as a, just a simple 3D surface, but the machining time gets a little bit long. Let's take a look at the size of this. I select that and I go to size. It's roughly almost seven by 
almost eight. So that could take a little bit of time. So I devised another method. The idea was I was going to actually uh, use a 3H2 a ball nose actually draw the lines across here where I wanted to cut and project down to the surface. I'll show you a little bit more about that. Okay, let's look at some layers here. Uh, da, 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 da. Try that. Now here's what these lines are. And, and what I really did was I took the outside border of the, the shell and then this was kind of a center point here and these are offset of 16. So each tool path is just going to be a, a, a bit down the center of the line, but the depth is projected to the surface. When you put all those together, it produces that surface, and it looks pretty good, and it, it, it doesn't take that much time. And then this represents the boundary of the shell, and then that was offset uh, to produce a boundary out here about an eighth out, and that's, that's how those were trimmed. So that's how that was done. Now let's, let's look at what happens. Okay, let's go to, oh, one other thing. Let's, while we're talking about this, let's talk about, let's go to 3D here. All right. Now, one other thing that I needed, I needed something besides this. And so I came over to model, and I added a component. And I basically just did that by uh, taking a rectangle and, and creating a solid out of it. And then they have, both have a common back. And so by raising the height of that, I could get that exactly where I wanted it. And then in the end, I think I combined those into a, a, a single graphic, but, but that's where it came from. Now let's look at what we would have to do to toolpath that. So let's go to simulation. All right, the first thing we did, let's get that. All right, so that, create, that actually created our surface. And you can see there's some little waves in there, but that actually, that actually works out fine. I think shells have that. Okay, and then we'll do the outside, so we cut the outside out. And when you're done, that's the shell. So that's how the shape was created. I started with the shell model. I added a little graphic in here, created the model, and then when we actually toolpathed it to produce it, I wanted to do it two at a time. Let's take a look at that drawing. For the machine setup, I decided to actually use both the left and the right shell. Uh, it just made it simpler. It gave me a larger area to, to have a better luck hold of a vacuum. And also, if I had to, I could actually tab. And then I put this piece in there, once again, to kind of connect it all. Now, let's look at how we, the geometry we need for tool path. Well, this represents the outside. So when we cut that out, that produces outside border. This line right here actually uh, was used to trim off the, the actual lines we used for the tool pathing. This is a pocket. It's going to be three quarters deep. So all kind of fits together. Now, let's look at the actual simulation and see what happened. All right, first thing we did is we did the 3D part, the surface. And so that's this. And let's turn that off. Let's go to simulation and let's just simulate that. Very similar to what you saw before. So there's the two parts. And then we came back and we created the pockets for the lap joint. And once again, keep in mind that interfaces with the, the center part that we already did. And then we cut the outside. And when you get finished, there's your parts. So that produced the two parts. And then these actually uh, lap in with uh, the center part. So that's how that was done. And then it's just a matter of outputting the tool pass and send them to the machine. We started out by placing the blank on the machine table. Masking film was applied to the painted surface. Make sure the paint's cured thoroughly before doing this. side of the sign was machined first. The entire surface was fly cut to ensure consistent thickness. Some additional panels were placed on the vacuum table to help with vacuum leakage through the MDF spoil board.
pockets were machined in the back surface that will serve as part of the lap joints that were used to connect the shells. were drilled in the back surface to allow us to align the front and back machining. The sign blank was removed so matching pinholes could be drilled in the spoil board. Finally, the blank was placed back on the spoil board with the top surface up. Carving operations took advantage of three tools, all cutting to exactly the same depth, yay Super Z. The first two were used to clean the bottom of the pocket, the V-bit was used to do the final detailing. sign was cut using a rough pass finish pass strategy to produce beautiful edges.
the blank for the shells is placed on the scoreboard and all the vacuum is directed to the front zone. The final machining operations create the 3D surface for the shells. The surfaces are created with the 3 8 ball nose tool. inch upshear bit is used to create the lap joint part of the shell components. operation is to cut the outlines of the shell components. Now they're ready for attachment to the main sign. Well, our sign project came out really nice, and you can tell once it's painted what a beautiful effect it has. And what's neat about this is we were able to use individual components and fasten them with joinery to actually create the final effect. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have questions, you can contact us at shopsaver.com. Thank you for watching.